So let's talk about hepatitis A and B a little bit. Hepatitis A, as you recall, is fecal oral. So these are the people that eat in restaurants. Someone's not washing their hands. So there you go. There's a hep A vaccine, single dose. Hepatitis B is bloodborne, so it is basically being transmitted how? Okay, if you came up with um, needle use, sexual contact, um, things like that, that is the correct way they will get this one. So, someone with hep, hep a and B, early signs of hepatitis are going to be anorexia, nausea, vomiting, um, inflamed liver, hepatomegaly, sometimes splenomegaly, um, abnormal liver function test. Not always, it depends where they are in the uh, transition, whether it's the acute phase, um, it's the early or late stages. So there are also Hep D, E, F, and G. We don't see those in the U.S. Those are usually in other countries. So don't worry about those. So Hep C. Hep C. Four million Americans have chronic Hep C. Bloodborne. This is a very slow, progressive chronic hepatitis C. It can be silent for up to two decades. Um, a lot of people may not even know that they have their hepatitis C positive. Um, it's very common for HIV patients because of um, IV drug use that they will be hep C positive as well as HIV positive. So, um, genotype 1 is the most common virus. Both hep B and hep C have different kinds of genotype, so there's different ones. Um, if you have hep C and it turns into chronic hep C, then the issue is, you know, um, do I have insurance? It's a cost factor. How am I going to be able to pay for the treatment? Um, treatment can be six months to up to a year for hep C if it doesn't turn chronic. Uh, treatments for chronic hep C though, um, they're going to look at the viral load. They are going to give the patient what's called pegylated interferon. Um, it's a subcutaneous shot once a week. They will also be on ribavirin capsule twice a day, I believe it is. Um, all this stuff is costly. Look at the cost for hep C, 20 to 30,000 a year. All at the same time, that's, this is happening. Um, patients still may be um, IV drug users while they have this. These patients also need to have, because of what's going on, they need to have nutrition. So they need to be taking vitamin B and complex, vitamin K. And because a lot of anorexia, they may be prescribed Marinol. Marinol is a synthetic synthetic THC from marijuana increases your appetite. Um, someone with chronic hep C also will be given most likely um, an antiviral medication. Um, so remember those, those end in VIR, drugs like Epivir, things like that. So they are called nu nu nucleoside nucleotide analogs. So common in hep B treatment as well. So if someone is getting pegylated interferon, just when they get those shots, they have profound fatigue. They don't have any energy. They have flu-like symptoms. They're irritable, insomnia. Um, they get depressed because they're giving themselves a shot or someone's giving themselves a shot. Pegylated interferon lasts longer than the regular interferon. If they are taking regular interferon, they have to have it maybe three times a week. So they have these symptoms three times a week, um, where pegylated is only given one time a week, so it's better. Um, but they all have these types of symptoms. If somebody is taking ribavirin because of hep C, chronic hep C, this is um, teratogenic, so it can cause birth defects. Um, patients have to sign a promise that they won't use two forms of birth control. 
even six months after taking the drug, even if the male is on ribavirin. Um, so if the woman's taking the ribavirin, the male, um, everybody's using birth control, two forms of birth control. So um, this medication, though, it's also going to cause fatigue, anemia, muscle pain, losing your hair. So imagine two drugs are going to cause flu-like symptoms, fatigue, pain, not a good combination. Hence, are people going to be compliant with this? Liver cancer, it's fourth common cancer. Hep C is responsible for 50 to 60% of liver cancers. Um, surgical resection is done on 15% of the patients. So a lot of other treatment, you're going to have chemotherapy, um, cryoablation, radio frequency, lots of different theory, um, therapies. They all cause problems. Um, liver cancer obviously will put a patient into cirrhosis if it's not cured. Acute pancreatitis. Acute pancreatitis can be brought on by alcoholism, like gallstones, biliary tract disease. Um, it can be an infection, viral, bacterial. Um, very painful. Every time you eat, your pancreas needs to secrete enzymes. So these patients don't want to eat, um, and that's obviously a problem. So a lot of these patients, when they have acute pan pancreatitis, they would be given TPM. A lot of pain. Um, beginning, you will have an increase of elevated serum, amylase, and lipase labels labels very common these patients if they're eating it's going to be very bland diet low in fat small meals um, because of where the cancer or where the pancreatitis is affecting the cancer these patients need to be monitored for their blood sugars blood sugars may go up a lot of patients because of what's going on is they because of the pain it the only thing they can do is get pain meds and they find that if they um, sleep on the left side, also called SIMS position, and with their knees up, that kind of um, helps the pain because now you're not near as taut in your abdomen and so that will help. Or head of the bed elevated at 45 degrees will also decrease tension on your abdomen. So if someone has acute pancreatitis, they don't know what it's being caused by. It could be blockage in the biliary tract, could be gallstones that's causing it, maybe they've migrated, things like that. Then the best way to test and see visually, or if you need to take out a gallstone, is to do what's called an endoscopic retrograde choleangiopancreatography, ERCP. ERCP, endoscopic, they're putting a scope down into the esophagus, they go down to the duodenum, remember the picture I showed you where the patients, on the patient you can see the um, opening there where everything comes out, that's where they're going to insert then the scope up into the common bile duct to see if there's a gallstone in the way, see if anything um, see what's causing them. Here's a picture of gallstones that are basically down in the common bile duct so they can take pictures. Um, another test they can do instead of an ERCP um, it's called an MRCP. So an MRI CP is basically they're using the MRI machine while they do that. Um, okay, so chronic pancreatitis. These are patients that's not acute, it's chronic. So these patients, very painful. These patients lose a lot of weight. They have to be taking pancreatic enzymes to eat. They need to have a low-fat, high-carb diet. Anybody with pancreatitis should not be drinking alcohol. Um, not a good thing. And they also need to... Um, be taking bile salts because the bile salts um, are going to absorb the vitamins A, D, E, and K. Remember, um, your vitamins that are fat soluble, so bile salts to absorb vitamins A, D, E, K. A lot of patients with um, pancreatitis or a 
also they also they have what's called colon sign. So colon sign is basically gets red here around the umbilicus, very large. That's a colon sign. So next theme that can happen to patients: pancreatic cancer. So a fourth leading cause of cancer. Most patients die within five to twelve months of um, diagnosis. Five-year survival rate is less than five percent. Patients that have pan chronic pancreatitis also can develop pancreatic cancer. Family history, smoking history, um, lots of interesting issues that go on with that as well. Very painful, fast death, a lot of abdominal pain, anorexia, they lose a lot of weight, uh, nausea, jaundice. So patients have no idea this is going on. Uh, a lot of doctors don't think of pancreatic cancer if you have stomach pain. Well, it must have been something you eat, you ate, um, maybe you just have the flu, that's why you're nauseated. It doesn't always cause jaundice, um, so I don't feel like eating. Well, who knows, you know, there's a bug going around. So a patient can have symptoms, you know, for a while before they actually figure out. There is a tumor marker, so blood tumor marker CA19-9. So Whipple surgery, there was a particular surgery called Whipple that years ago was only done for um, cancer patients. So Whipple procedure, the real name of it is radical pancreaticoduodenectomy. Um, Whipple procedure for cancer is also done for patients. It has to be cancer on the head of the pancreas. So only 15 to 20 percent of patients that have pancreatic cancer have resectable tumors. Whipple procedure can also be done for benign tumors. It can be done for patients that don't have cancer but they have cysts, cysts on their pancreas. Um, so it's a very involved surgery. Not a lot of, very few doctors do this. You're a specialist in pancreatic surgery. There's two doctors in Boise that do this. It's a long surgery, um, anywhere from you know five to ten hours, depending what's going on. So basically, what they're doing is they're going to remove the distal segment of the stomach, or called the antrum. Then the first and second portions of the duodenum are removed. The head of the pancreas, the common bile duct, and the gallbladder. So the reason they do this is the pancreas and the duodenum share the same arterial blood flow supply. So these arteries run through the head of the pancreas, so you have to remove those if the single blood supply is severed. So if only the head of the pancreas were removed, then it would compromise blood flow to the duodenum. So it's a very involved surgery. Here's what it looks like. So they're taking off the gallbladder. Um, so well, that's up here, so they'll leave a little stub. So and then you got your common bile duct. So they're still going to take the remainder of the pancreas and attach that into the uh, duodenum here. Notice the stomach, though, is trimmed way down. And so now they have a smaller stomach when they eat. Everything goes in here to the, here to the jejunum, a little bit further down here, jejunum ileum. So, but they're still going to get all their enzymes from the pancreas and the liver are going to come in here so they can still have that while they eat. So cholelithiasis, 